two motors out there. Let's talk about tuning for a minute. Um, first off, tuning in any motor, if you want to know what its default tuning is, you can go to the display ADB base, uh, uh, kinematics database file, <coughs> and down here you'll see what default tuning is. KP of 3000, KD of 10,000, KI of 240 it looks like, KL limit on KI is 1000. KA is zero, KB is 1500, KG, okay, what does all this K crap mean? All right, let's talk about tuning for a minute. And I like to do it in, in, in uh, analogous to driving a car. You have three kinds of basic tuning. Unless the market is more expensive. All right, you have KB, KI, and I'll tell you what, hold on. We have some proportional gain. We don't know what it's proportional to. What's KI mean? The integral of what? The same thing. The integral of that same thing. Okay. Okay, the integral of something that we're proportional to. I'll tell you what. Okay, so we got the integral of something. Okay? Let's put it here. Okay? What's KD? Derivative. Derivative. Okay. KD. The reason I did it like this is we know we're proportional to something. To take the derivative of that proportion, we see the change over time. To take the integral, we're going the other direction. In other words, the KB would be the derivative of KI, and KD would be the derivative of KP. We just don't know what KP is to begin with. It could be a spring constant. And we do have a magnetic spring in here. Okay, so you have the integral of something that we're proportional to, and the derivative of something we're proportional to. Okay, we just don't know what it's proportional to. Okay, how does the servo work? What's what's it do to move anywhere? It has to have a bearing system, actual command position. Okay, actual command position. Velocity. But it looks like a velocity. That's what you're trying to do. No matter what, you try to get up and maintain some velocity. Okay? You try to maintain some velocity, you get up here, and if it gets behind, you've got to do something in gain to get it back where it is. Okay? That's your proportional gain. It's really based on the following air while running at a given speed. Okay? Now, some people will argue the point and say KP is not velocity gain, but I'm going to tell you it basically is velocity gain. It's a proportional amount of drive current delivered to maintain a given velocity. Okay? It's proportional to the error in that velocity. If I'm trying to run at 100 RPM and I'm running at 90, I'm 10% off of where I should be. So I'm going to take this proportional gain and multiply it by that 10% deviation to try to get me back where I need to be. Okay? Proportional gain. Okay? If that's velocity, okay, and I'm just going to put velocity here. Let me fight the bell so I don't my hand on the What's the integral of velocity? Acceleration. Division. Our two opposite ends. One of you's right and the other one's wrong, okay? The integral of velocity is what? I hear two people say the position. They're right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Position is the integral of velocity. What's the differential of velocity? 50-50-90. You know what that means? You got a 50-50 chance of getting it right. 90% of the time you'll get it wrong. Okay. Acceleration. Okay. What it really comes down to is effectively this is velocity gain, this is acceleration gain, and this is position gain. Effectively, that's what they are. Now, if you look at these distinct, uh, what did you call them, mode diagrams, uh, which I always hated, they'll tell it to you a little bit different. But the fact of the matter is, this is basically how it works. Okay? Anyone in here ever worked on their own car? 
Okay, anybody in here remember carburetors before they had fuel injection? Okay, you know they ever, you know, what is that pedal called you press on? Accelerator pedal. Let me ask you this, does your car accelerate if you're holding the pedal still? No, it only accelerates if you press it down. And technically, if you're pressing down on it, it only accelerates up to the speed that you held it to that new position. It really only accelerates while you're moving it. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> while you move it, it accelerates up to that new speed. Okay? So let's just look at that foot pedal you got your foot on there, okay? For me, it's all the way down all the time. Okay? There's your accelerator pedal. Okay? Let's just say for the sake of knowledge, this is 55 miles per hour. And you know that you hold it right there to go 55 miles per hour. Right here is sitting still, and right here is where I was at. Okay, so you're holding it at 55 miles per hour. Okay, the angle of that is basically your KP gauge. Because you know that if you put it right here or so, that's about 80. Okay, go down here, you're going where I am, especially in Germany. Okay? So wherever you hold it, that's the equivalent of KV gain, because it's a gain for velocity to be maintained on that car. But what happens when you start going uphill? Slow down. Do you slow down? I don't. I push down far on the pedal. <laughs> okay. You're circling. <laughs> yeah, I'm circling. That's right. Gee, he just hit the nail on the head. When I'm going up the hill, I tend to press down further. My audible hearing and my looking out my peripheral says, I'm slowing down. I hear the engine get slower, I'm going to press on that a little bit more. I'm giving it a more, more proportional gain. Okay? Well, am I really giving it a more proportional gain? There's something else that happens inside that engine when you press it. That's why I asked if you knew about carburetors. Way back when, carburetors had a little leakage going to them, and here's your little carburetor, okay? And it's got your hole down the center. And it's got a little flat valve right here. It opens up more and more the more you press this. Okay? As you press it wide open, it goes all the way up and down. Well, there's something else linked in there. Okay? It's got a little gas ring in here, a little ring here that drops pellets of gas down in there, drops of gas. And this just allows more and more air flow. But when you press on the accelerator pedal, there's this little diaphragm right here. And there's this little reservoir of more gas with a little hole right here with a little, little spout, okay? So this is filled up with gas. And as you press on it, this moves, okay? But once you're sitting there, it's sitting still, okay? So any place you sit still, nothing happens. But while you press on it, it dumps extra gas in. That's exactly what our drive does. And what that is, is KD. That's that extra amount of fuel we're adding to it while trying to move the accelerator pedal. Okay? KD is acceleration gain. Well, let me ask you this. You're sitting at a stoplight. The light turns green, and it's a 55-mile-an-hour zone. Do you just press your pedal to this point and then hold it there, or do you press it much further? You press it a lot further to get up to speed, right? Guess what? KD is always bigger than KP. It takes more to get you up to speed than it does to maintain speed. So nine times out of 10, KD is bigger than KP. Some people call it a damping coefficient. It's really the derivative. It truly is an acceleration coefficient, okay? It's the derivative of something. Therefore, it's the acceleration of some velocity, or you could have said one notch down, but of course, there's nothing beyond the position, okay? So, KD, it always takes more. You press down more, it dumps a little more gas in there on top of whatever's already done with this, okay? And then after that settles out, there's no more coming in here. KD is also dynamic. The D stands for dynamic. It only takes effect while you're changing. KD does nothing while maintaining. It adds nothing to the equation while maintaining. It is strictly dynamic. It's the derivative. It is the rate of change of that following here that's occurring. It is affected by the rate of change. That's what derivative is. It looks at the rate of change of following here, and it adds a gain proportional to the rate of change. If the following here is not changing, there is no rate of change. KD has no effect. Okay? Remember
remember, derivative is the rate of change. And this is proportional to the error in velocity, and there is no change in the error in velocity, then there is no KD. It doesn't exist. It has no effect. KD is derivative and dynamic. Okay? That's how KD works. It is extra gain for the dynamics. Just like sitting at that stoplight, you press on the accelerator pedal way down to get you up to speed. Now, if you get up to speed, you lift off and that KD gain goes away. Okay? All right. Now, you come up to the stoplight that's coming up ahead. If it's yellow, everybody in here speeds up. Okay? But you're far enough away where you know you're going to have to stop. Okay? You get up to the stoplight. Are you the first one on the line? I don't know. But you start easing into the line at the last second. Okay, so you didn't quite get to where you needed to go. You let off the brake a little bit, hit the gas a little bit if you're on a hill. Okay, and you slowly tweak into where you need to be. Okay, you can't just come sliding up real fast and slam on brakes and land on the line. Typically, you creep into the last minute. Okay, and that's where KI comes in. It integrates over time the offset of where you should have been. The integral of anything is the inverse of the rate of change. It is now looking at small increments of time to see if you drifted, okay? It doesn't take as much to hold still, but if you start to creep back, okay, if you're on a hill and you're creeping back a little bit, you gotta give it a little more gas, okay? And then finally it holds up there. Well, KI also has to build, okay? So let's suppose that you're hauling a camper you get up to the stoplight, normally you don't have to hold as much on that accelerator pedal to get it right up to the stoplight, but you're hauling a camper. So instead, you gotta get a little more gas to get going, just a little bit, just to get it right up to the line, or you have to brake a little bit harder. Okay, if the increase in elevation occurs as you're going up a hill, you have to give it a little bit more over time to make sure it doesn't drift back. And you go, oh shoot, I'm still driven back, let me press on my accelerator pedal just a little bit more, assuming you got it on now got a stick, you're not doing that. Okay, so if you got an automatic, you're giving a little bit more. Okay? KI is very slow to respond. Just like it's slow to respond for you to keep it on that hill. KI is the integral. It's the rate of change, the inverse, I should say, of the rate of change. Okay, so what it's looking for is just the position. Am I in position? But it doesn't take that much to do that. It just takes a little bit. That's why KI is typically smaller than KP. It really doesn't take that much to hold into that position. However, KI may build over time because if you have friction like a heavy camper and you're still not quite up to that line on a hill, you kind of keep adding more and more and more as you slowly creep up. And when you get there, you hold on the brake and you let off the accelerator. So KI builds over time. As a result, there's a limit, KF. Right here, KF. Okay, it's a factored limit in the algorithm that says, if I don't have enough added gain to hold myself in position, I'm gonna keep adding more and more until finally I work into position. That's how KI works. It integrates over time and it says, okay, am I there yet? Am I there yet? Am I there yet? Yes, you're the kid in the back seat. We're not there yet. Okay, so he keeps going for it until finally you're there. Okay, so the integral is slow. It's not very dynamic. As a result, there's one more aspect of these. Proportional, velocity gain, differential, acceleration gain, position is integral gain, okay? And I said that this is dynamic, it acts quickly. This one's something proportional in the middle, this one's slow. You know what that means? This is low frequency gain, this is high frequency gain. For subtle changes in motion, this one builds up to take over and compensate. For dynamic changes in motion, this one takes over. KD is high frequency gain, KI is low frequency gain. When I say low frequency, I'm talking really low. So if you're sitting there, if you try to make a move, you excel up to speed, and then over time, in reality, you're right here, guess what? KI slowly builds up more and more to try to get you into speed, okay? Because you're slightly behind. Okay? But eventually they'll get up there and then KI will say, oh shoot, I got too much, now I gotta go back down. So KI will cause a slow frequency fluctuation. Whereas KD will do this ringing. 
Okay? So what I tell people, for those who are musically inclined, when Chuck and I used to do bands and stuff like that, play guitar and jump, I would tell people, if you hear it ringing or squeaking like a mouse, your KD is probably too hot. If you hear it growling, low frequency grunting, <clears throat> KI is probably too hot. What if they too hot too much? Okay? So you can audibly tell. If you have this high pitch whining, KD is probably too hot. If you have a low frequency growling noise, KI is probably too hot. Okay? That is a fact. This is low frequency gain, that is high frequency gain. Does everybody understand that about tuning in? So, does that help you tune anything? No. Okay. 